Hi guys, TKN here, back with another video. So as we play more JRPGs, we pick up our own ways of playing through them, our habits if you will. Min-maxing, completing every aspect of a game, or just seeing the story through. There's a wide array of players who experience this genre, and my mindset has always been, there's no right or wrong way of playing. However, the more that I play for myself, the more I start to realise the arguably bad habits I've developed while going through these 50 plus hour adventures, whether it be through morbid curiosity or misguided caution. So I want to share with you guys some of the bad habits I have developed while playing JRPGs. For this first one, I want you to imagine that you've just entered a new town. One of the first things I'm sure you'll be thinking of is the new gear that you can obtain, as generally these represent milestones within the journey. And they're often precursors for the next big dungeon or main story sequence, meaning that you want to make sure that you're prepared. Naturally then, you go to that vendor and you kit yourself out with some shiny new threads and make sure to sharpen your blade to a mean glean. Here's the problem though. Not five minutes into that dungeon and you find the same item hidden away in an easily found treasure chest. And in a fit of frustration, you realise you've effectively set fire to your gold, gill, mirror, whatever the currency may be. Sure, you can sell it, but those vendors have got to make a living. They'll give you half back if you're lucky. I find I do this more often than I care to admit, but I think this is a necessary bad habit, as there are times when said items won't be in these dungeons, and even if they were, you've still got to kit out all members of your party. Chances are, if you want to do this, you're going to have to explore every nook and cranny of that dungeon, so the time saved is probably worth it in the long run anyway. Talking about saving time, this leads us on to the second bad habit, and that is when you press that A button too fast and skip NPC dialogue. Hey, these are long games, and sometimes those eyes might be drooping, mum's told you to get to bed for the start of a new week, and you just want to push through to that next big milestone before packing it in for the night. You see a bunch of exposition, not voiced either, and you might just feel it's inconsequential and absentmindedly just keep pressing away. I'll often do this for the run-of-the-mill side quests, stuff like please save our town from the vicious goblins that took my my prized basket of oranges, but every now and then it will come back to bite me as there may be a multiple choice answer I have to give and I accidentally choose the wrong option due to impatience, meaning I have to go through the sequence all over again, which defeats the point of saving time. Of course, some of this dialogue might also be important as part of a tutorial, for example, and skipping over that has the same effect. Next up is a problem also related to dialogue, but it's birthed mostly through my history with Falcom games, and that's talking to all the NPCs. Falcom titles, especially Trails, are known for their world building, and one of the draws of the games is that you're not only witnessing the adventure of the main cast, but if you put in the time, you'll also be seeing the same for the various inhabitants that make up the world. You might get exposure through a side quest at first, but then they continually appear at varying points in the story, with minor developments to their individual arc. And this can be rewarding. Trails in particular has a bunch of NPCs, that bounce between arcs who pretty much become cult heroes in their own right. The problem is that I will often apply this to every game I play, when it's clear that the world building is not at the same level, or indeed the focus of the game. I remember the first time I played an Atelier game, I was attempting to talk to all those walking pixels, and was stunned that their dialogue never pushed beyond nice weather we're having today. Sure, there are games that do have a similar approach to trails like Tales of, Xenoblade and the like, but it's a simple truth that in reality, not all games are made from the same yoke. And maybe if I applied this next bad habit a bit more efficiently, then I might go in expecting that. This behaviour actually refers to before I start a game, and it's the research I put in before engaging. This is why I'm not married yet. I like to alternate short games and long games, and nowadays the only research I'll do beforehand is checking how long a game is on average. It's often an estimate that allows me to plan for the newer releases while fitting in other games too. However, in the past, I would find myself venturing down a rabbit hole and visiting those wikis or subreddits to get some more opinions. This, however, however, came with two big issues. The first of which is that every now and then I would career headfirst into a heavy spoiler. Trails is a good example here again, and that was on me. I was stupid for visiting a wiki dedicated to a massively interconnected series. Of course, there was going to be something there that bit me on the widger. Thankfully, these spoilers rarely affected my overall enjoyment, but I can't deny I would have liked to see them in real time and have that raw emotion that comes with it rather than expecting the event to occur. The second issue comes with perception. People say that first impressions are everything, but the issue is that if your first impression comes from the opinion of others, you go into a game with a skewed view of what to expect. If JRPG Warrior 69 tells me that the game is a masterpiece, I'm going to go in expecting as much, and if I get anything else, there will be hell to pay. So as a result, checking the average completion time nowadays is as far as I will go, and I'll let the game do the talking for me. For this next one, I think it's fair to say that none of us want to lose progress in a JRPG. We could wipe on a boss, have an unexpected power cut, or maybe just smash the console out of rage. 
Not me, definitely not. Thankfully, we're past the 8-bit era of games and developers were happy enough to grace us with a wonderful feature that allows us to save our progress at a moment's notice, for the most part at least. Unfortunately for the option itself, I'm often like a learner driver trying not to piss off their instructor by continually applying the brake. That probably annoys them even more to be honest. But I'll be using this after every main scene, every couple of level ups, or just when I feel the time is right. And I'll often ensure that I save said progress in different slots, you know, just in case I find that I've screwed something up five hours later. What results is an armada of separate save files, or a potential mental breakdown when the game only allows one save at a time, like Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Is it a bad habit to be safe rather than sorry? I'd say not. I feel this is something older gamers will appreciate more as back in the day, we didn't have modern marvels like auto-save features, we had to do it alone. And as such, this is one that I will personally defend for myself, but coming out of a game session every 10 minutes or so to cement that save state doesn't do wonders for the game's pacing. But even with all those extra saves and talking to NPCs, eventually you'll find yourself at the final stretch, the culmination of your journey and the main message of the entire adventure. Through your trials, you have saved countless individuals, witnessed the growth and development of your party members, and braved the most brutal of trials, all for this final moment, collecting many useful and powerful items that will aid you in that final bout. And come that battle, you don't use them. And they're stuck in your bag for perpetuity, never to be used or sold, they're just there. I hope I'm not the only one who does this, but for me, it is my worst habit. Holding on to late game items, believing that I will need them for those closing moments, and then never using them. Maybe because I overleveled, or the fight itself just isn't that difficult. I go in expecting Ultra Instinct Goku, and instead get Firma Man from My Hero. That's a UK comedy from the early 2000s for you guys who don't live here. I don't know why, but I consistently do this. I always feel that the final boss will test me to my limits, and there are times when I will use maybe one of the items, like for example, in SMT3, but more often than not, they're just wasted pixels in my inventory, kind of like a failsafe just in case things do go wrong, which they generally don't. I weep for all of the Zerum capsules that have never seen the light of day, but what can you do? And there it is, guys. That'll close us out for my personal bad habits in JRPGs. Share yours in the comments, give us a like and subscribe for more JRPG content, and consider joining my Patreon if you're interested. Peace.